All right, David Harry here. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is showing you an example of using the Blackmagic camera app with an iPad Pro, which is the M2 version that I have here. But very importantly, I'm going to be showing you that app working with not only an external SSD to record the video files to, but also an external microphone and also a clean feed HDMI coming out as well, which can be used for further monitoring or recording. Now, just a couple of caveats before I go any further. I will, of course, be showing some footage that has been shot using the setup that I'm about to show you. However, that footage is just going to be shot at my tabletop here. And like, you know, whatever I've got to hand to put in the frame, basically. So just a warning, the, the, the shots themselves are not going to be exciting or anything, but but it's really just to show the proof of concept here. Also as well, with regard to those particular shots, I am neither a camera operator or a DP. So yes, my camera skills are very lacking, but you know, these are, once again are just going to be examples to show you a workflow and also a proof of concept. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just to explain the hardware that I am using here. Now, of course, depending upon what your setup is, whether it's the iPad or whether it's going to be a phone, you will be able to use loads of variations of hardware. However, immediately I've just found a whole bunch of stuff here that I have that definitely works. Now, central to that is going to be some form of a hub system. You will definitely need a hub of some description in order to be able to connect to more than one device via either Thunderbolt or USB-C, depending upon the device that you're using from Apple here. Anyway, so as far as that's concerned, the first thing that I'm going to be using here is a Thunderbolt 4 hub by Acasis. I will show you some close-ups shortly of how this is all connected and whatnot. But like I say, this is like probably the most important thing for this particular setup due to the fact that this setup does need to connect and communicate to various other devices. Now, as far as my external SSD is concerned, once again, I'm using an Acasis product here. And this is basically a Thunderbolt 4 and 3 and every conceivable variation of USB uh, enclosure and this inside has got a Western Digital SN850X uh, 4 terabytes if I've got that particular SSD wrong I will flash it up right now if I I've got the wrong SSD in mind here. Okay, so that's going to be my external SSD. And then also, as far as the microphone is concerned, I'm going to be connecting this uh, USB audio interface. Now, this is one by Behringer. This happens to be the Euphoria MC202HD. So this is what I'm going to use to plug a microphone into. And indeed, the mic that I'm going to plug into this is going to be one of these mics here. And basically, this is a condenser mic. It's not really worth me telling you what this mic is any condenser mic would work via this device here or any dynamic mic it just so happens that i'm using a condenser for this okay so like i've just said the variations of my hardware to do this could chop and change depending upon you know, the apple device that you're using but that's the basics of what i've got here also in order to get my clean feed out as well i'm going to be using a usb-c to HDMI cable here, which just comes straight out of the hub, because of course the iPad Pro and presumably, and um, like you know the the, the up and coming uh, iPhone 15s, especially the Pro variants, they're all going to be or they should be a uh, Display Port minimum of Display Port 1.4 Alt mode compatible. So a cable like this would work directly out of the phones, as they do work directly out of the iPad, but also work directly coming from the hub system and these would definitely work or they should do depending upon your hub it should work on a USB-C hub or a Thunderbolt hub however everything that I'm showing here obviously all works okay so what I'm going to do now I'm just going to flip the camera over 
I'm not entirely sure how wide I can get this shot here, but I should be able to show you or like the physical setup here. Okay, so this is now my top-down shot or my rostrum shot. So what I'm gonna have to do quickly is explain something here. Um, I will not have the time to like keep resetting and stuff for the likes of manual focus and also like manual exposure, which are the things that I would normally do when I do a product demonstration. Obviously manual focus because I might get closer to an object or manual exposure because depending upon like you know the color or say like whether the product is dark or black I would normally have to reset these things between shots I simply don't have the time for it right now I need to do this as quickly as possible and just get this video done so I'm just gonna hopefully have to rely on my ZV-1 here to be a nice little camera and get in as best as possible anyways what what I'm going to show you first then is the uh, the Thunderbolt hub here now this Thunderbolt here hub is by a casus i can't remember the model number i will flash the model number up on the screen and also there'll be like a ton of links in the video description to all the stuff i will show within this video anyway this particular hub it comes with its own power supply and that power supply will supply 100 watts to the hub and then that 100 watts can be used for various things anyway on the front here we've got the input here for the power supply there and then we've got three outputs which are thunderbolt 4 now these are thunderbolt 4 or, or, or thunderbolt 3 and obviously depending upon the type of cable you might use to connect to USB devices you can go from C to C or C to A and these will communicate over every basically every like you know USB version that you can possibly think of I've tried these on a load of things and they're great now on the back here what we have got is another Thunderbolt port here or it's a USB-C port but Thunderbolt and this connects directly to your host device which in this instance is going to be the iPad Pro here and then what we have also got here is a USB-A port which is USB be, it's, oh, 10 gigabits it is it says it on the back <laughs> I should read these things yes that's just the standard USB-A port to give us like you know access to traditional USB devices but it also operates at 10 gigabits now of course anything to do with any of the devices that you plug within any hub not just this one but any hub which is either Thunderbolt or USB-C we're talking about the total amount of data uh, or bandwidth is say for this 40 gigabits per second however that doesn't mean that each port is 40 gigabits per second it's all just basically allocated from one chunk of 40 gigabits per second as far as the bandwidth is concerned also i'm likely to cut quite heavily into this pc because i will fluff something and have to go back anyway with that there let me just pick up one of these cables this little box here also comes with a thunderbolt 4 cable so simply all we do we just connect the ipad to the box here and like i said before we plug it into this port here which is the host port so let me just plug that into there and then let me just get the power supply so i'm going to plug the power supply into the hub and maybe the ipad might actually trigger here and go into charging mode let's see hold on so power in there okay yeah there we go so the ipad is now saying that it is charging so right now what we have got is power to the ipad so that'll that'll stay totally topped up and also the box is then capable of supplying other power as well okay so that's that bit sorted now i suppose the next thing to do is go straight to this particular uh, ssd that i'm using now once again this is an acasis device again i will throw the model number up on the screen however i don't need to because it's on the back maybe i should have looked on the back of that as well so this is the tbu 405 pro m1 now once again although this is a thunderbolt device as in thunderbolt 4 it is also compatible with thunderbolt 3 and this can be plugged straight into any type of usb device as well or USB-C device and it will act as a USB-C drive up to and including USB 4 as well so that's 40 gigabits on USB 4 and again with the appropriate like you know C to A cables you could plug this into loads of other USB devices as a data storage unit so let me just get the cable for this I should have got my cables laid out a bit better for this one <laughs> right so once again there's a Thunderbolt 4 cable that actually does come with the actual enclosure oh yeah sorry uh, internally on 
this enclosure. Give me a second, hold on. Let me just pop this open. Hopefully, what is, I've been testing a number of things here. Basically, I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff with the cases product, so I've been doing tons of testing. I just can't remember what I used here, hold on. Okay, so this is a Western Digital SN850X4 terabyte. So that's the SSD that's inside here. Absolutely the best possible like Thunderbolt external drive you can use on any Mac that's got Thunderbolt 4 or Thunderbolt 3. This is the fastest you will get. Obviously won't run as fast as it's capable of capable of on this particular setup, only because the data rates realistically coming out of the iPad backwards and forwards are not quite the same as what they are on the Macs and stuff. Anyways, what we'll do here, I will just plug the Thunderbolt 4 cable into the actual SSD there. Oh, space is getting a bit weird, isn't it? Right, and then I will then plug that into one, of, plug it into one of the available ports here. Oh, oh on the hub, uh, oh, that, that didn't sound good, did it? It wouldn't have damaged it. Oh, I hope a case is not watching this. <laughs> right, so let me just pop that into there. Now what we should notice in a moment is yeah there we go i don't know if we can see that there's a little green light indicator there that's actually telling us that the drive is now activated also we have a switch on this one actually just quickly yeah this is one of the kind of like more updated hubs sorry this is one of the most recently updated enclosures not hubs by a cases and this button here is for a fan on it so it's really cool well, actually you say cool it's cool looking but it's also cool because it keeps your drive cooler as well Anyway, so so far there, what we've got are the hub connected and also the external hard drive. Now what I'm going to do is to connect this Behringer USB audio interface here. Now the other thing to make note of here, as I've already said, you could do a similar setup you know, to what I'm doing here with a lot of different types of devices, depending on whether or not that's USB-C or Thunderbolt and whatnot. But the one thing you definitely have to do if you're going to use a USB audio interface, it has to be class compliant. Now by class compliancy, what I mean by that is just any kind of audio device like this where when you plug it into whatever it goes in into whether that's like a windows pc mac pc or an ipad or anything like that it has to be one of those ones that doesn't require specific drivers in order to work that basically is what class compliancy means or class compliant so this is a class compliant one and it definitely works with this setup just letting you know this because if you use something else and it doesn't work it might be because it's not class compliant now on the back here, we've got one of those types of USB ports. So um, what is it, a USB B something? Oh, whatever, it's a printer port one, right? <laughs> it's a USB printer port, okay, we'll leave it at that. So let me just put that there. So what we need here to connect it to the hub or the dock is, actually I'll use hub and dock interchangeably. They're essentially the both, both the same things. So what I'm gonna do here is use this cable, which has got that on one end, which is what we've got on the back of the audio interface. Then on this end, we have got USB-C. So once again, let me just pop this in. So, oh, look at this, I'm getting loads of YouTube notifications. One of my videos might be blowing up, who knows? Although that's unlikely. Anyway, <laughs> right, so I'll pop that into there. And then what I'm going to do is then connect that to another po another port on the front here. I'm not going to lift this up so much because I don't want to start like you know dragging the uh, SSD all over the place. So I'll pop that in there. Okay. Now what we should notice on the front here now. There we go. We're now getting some lights on the front here, as we can see. Now the important thing to note here, especially with this particular uh, USB audio interface is once it is connected and all powered up, we will also get phantom power as well on these XLRs for the mic inputs. So like I said earlier, you can essentially use any like you know condenser microphone here or any dynamic microphone and this particular interface has got like decent preamps on and you can also gain really high with it as well without it going too noisy so really nice box this one okay now what i'm going to do here is show you the last component and that is a usb c to HDMI cable. Now, what's important here is that this has to be, uh, this, uh, what is it, DP alt mode 1.2 or 1.4, can't remember. I'll flash it on the screen if it makes any difference. Um, but it has to basically comply with the alt modes and stuff, which this cable actually does. So on this end here, we've got USB-C. 
and then on this end here we've obviously got hdmi once again we just simply plug that into the thunderbolt hub or the thunderbolt dock here okay and then we can now plug the hdmi there into whatever we want to um, in my instance i'm actually going to be plugging this into a ninja in fact give me a second i'll try and show you this now plugged into something okay so i'm going to try and show you as best as i can what the setup now looks like all kind of connected together and everything unfortunately this just looks like a mess uh, the only problem is here is that i just don't have a wide enough angle to get in and show things properly also i've had to take the stabilizer off on the zv1 as well just to get that wider field of view anyway i will try my best to get in and show you stuff okay so if i get over here as we can see that is the audio interface now if i just scratch the front of this mic we should be able to see the corresponding vu level there okay right so that's definitely going in if i stay quiet there we go the signals come off there and then if we have a look over here at the ipad so that's the level there now obviously the mic's picking me up as well as my main mic here but this is the microphone as you'll see now when i scratch it i'll go quiet when i scratch it you'll see it correspond to the vu on the ipad okay so quite clearly that microphone being picked up on the ipad there and then obviously um you know there's the ssd and stuff that's connected in fact let me see if i can work out how to get in here actually just a quick jump cut what it is i have now put my zv1 on a tiny tripod on the table here so i can obviously go hands-free properly and hopefully get a better focus because i've gone manual with the focus although i do seem to have a bit of a dutch angle thing on the go which is pretty cool anyways let me just jump into here so if i go to settings and then if i go to let's see media and then on media here we've got like a whole bunch of options but one of these options is here it says save clips to so i'll tap on there now when you want to manually assign the clips to go somewhere specific you just go into files there so if i just pop on files there as you can see it's saying here 4tb thunderbolt that's just the name of my thunderbolt drive and inside there i've got a, a folder which says black magic camera so what happens all of the recordings will default to that folder on my four terabyte thunderbolt as you can see there are some test clips there and also when you do initially set that folder it will also create a proxies folder or a proxy folder within your designated folder and obviously that's for like recording proxies too and stuff and in fact whilst we're here let me just come back if i go to audio as we will see here where it says audio source i'll tap on it. it was already telling us what it was on but we get the options here of like non ipad microphone or select you know a compatible usb device that's connected now that usb device that's connected could actually be a directly attached usb microphone obviously in this instance i'm just using an audio interface and my microphone goes into that audio interface okay now what i'm gonna have to do just to show you um like everything coming out onto the screen at the back is to uh, yeah i'm gonna have to go manual again with the camera okay back to my dodgy handheld unstabilized shot here so obviously there's the screen there on the ipad and then there's the monitor behind it which has now got the clean hdmi feed coming out of it now the thing is let me just see right what i'm going to try and do here i'm going to try and pull the camera back as far as possible to get things in shot although that will mean i've got to get further away from my microphone so you might not be able to hear me properly but what i'm going to do i'm just going to put my hand in front of the cat in front of the lens there on the ipad we can see it actually going on there onto the back screen but i'll try and do a wider shot here and what you will see is like there is a serious low latency thing going on here uh, i wouldn't say it's completely in real time but the latency is massively low it's really impressive so hold on let me just see this right there can we get to see what's going on there hold on right i just can't see what i'm doing properly here but you'll get the effect so there's me hand obviously in the front in front of the camera and look at this that latency there i mean it actually feels like there's no latency and i, I can't imagine that there's no latency but yeah look at it that is super impressive 
Anyways, um, I think that'll do it for this part of the video because I don't know how much of this is going to look good on screen because I'm holding the camera without a stabilizer on it. Now what I'm going to do now is just jump straight to some test clips that I have already done. Okay, so this is me first test shot here. Now, unfortunately, I've got like a lot of hot spot going on up here. The, the problem is I've got lights directly above here. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to basically expose for the keyboard here. I will try and get some better shots than this as well, but they're all just going to be locked off simple shots. Now, what I'm doing here is set and focus for the G key on the keyboard there. Now, I also want to know what these shots are going to look like punched into. So what I'll do now is right now, I will have just punched in a bit into this picture here just to get a bit bit of like a bit more zoomed in and close up there on the actual keyboard now I'm just going to come back out again okay so that'll give us an idea of that static shot which unfortunately isn't probably best exposed but it'll just give you an idea of what the focusing is like now give me a second okay so what I'm going to do now because it looks like you can focus during recording I'm totally out of focus right now so what I'm going to do is just start pulling through the focus here and let's just see what happens so here we go should start coming in soon okay now obviously you're not very precise here because you've got to run down the screen with your finger but like I said I'm just going slowly through that focus range there let me just carry on then it should maybe go back out of focus again there we go okay so as we can see there I've actually run right the way through the focus range there and go back a bit faster this time there we go okay so that gives us an idea of the fact that you can actually as it were pull focus if you want to although it's obviously going to be very cumbersome to do it on the screen just using your finger but as we've seen there that'll give you an idea that it can be done okay so with this same boring shot here which is obviously not particularly brilliantly exposed because of the hot spots and stuff uh, what i'm going to do is just pull some stuff in and out of the frame so i've actually got focus on auto right now so let me just throw a battery into the frame let's see what goes on okay that seems to have caught that quite well now as we can see the background's blared out so it's definitely pulled its focus there to the battery now let me pull that out the shot okay well that actually does seem quite impressive to be honest there's the battery again yeah it's picking it up quite quickly i mean i'm only previewing here i'm looking down on the ipad screen so it is kind of small oh yeah another thing as well uh, that i forgot to mention but you will have seen it during like those pictures of the ipad the app itself just centers into the center of the ipad it doesn't go full screen and stuff so that also doesn't help me right now because i'm looking at the ipad screen at this stuff anyway pull it back out again now let me pull something else into the shot here so okay uh now that's oh it's caught focus okay it's caught focus on the text there i was just wondering if the silver logo was going to give it oh yeah you might be able to see my reflection there i've got a microphone strapped to me head <laughs> oh no i love making a fool of myself there we go anyway let's have a look at the text instead so there's the text i'll pull that out the way okay yeah that's definitely all working in fact let me see if i can get to the sockets on the back here do you know what i've got to say immediately i'm very impressed with the autofocus in here because that's definitely pulling into where I need it to go to. I mean, I am generally just going into the center of the screen there. In fact, you know what? Let me try coming in from the side of the screen and I won't go straight into the center. Let's see what happens. So that's just onto the side. Okay, so it looks like it's center weighted maybe, um, or it might be going for some kind of weird average. I'm not entirely sure. So what I'll do, I'll just start pushing a bit more into the frame. There we go, it's caught focus there now. Okay, and if I pull it out, and then let me just try that again with the battery. Um, I'll come in slightly slow. Okay, yeah, I'm right on the edge of the frame there, and as we can see, it's not changing focus. So let me pull in. Was it about, about here maybe? No. About there. Okay, yeah, so it's definitely pulling focus into the objects like, the, you know, in the foreground and stuff. So that is definitely going to be useful for stuff that. Actually, just one other quick thing before I move on. What it is, it would appear that it is actually changing between the different lenses live when you're in record mode. So right now we're on the ultra wide lens. Now what I'm going to do is just tap onto 
the 28 millimeter lens and there we go it's just jumped straight in so let me just go backwards there okay yeah so that's really cool so you can actually jump between the lenses as you're going through the recording as well so i'm quite sure that's going to be really helpful for some people obviously you would probably have a better exposed picture than what this one is but again i'm just giving you examples of like you know some of the stuff that you can realistically do with the setup okay so just a quick example here of the front camera as well and as we can see this shot might look a bit crazy to some people because i've got a microphone strapped to me head it just means that i can move about and keep me vo constant and stuff when i'm doing stuff like this and um, but nonetheless yeah this is the front camera and let me just have a quick look here i'm gonna see if i can check change again oh yeah look at that so that's allowed you to change between all of the cameras there now of course obviously if you're set manually like i'm uh, for your exposure and stuff i believe i'm still on auto as well for the focus however between the wide lens there and the front lens there there's no focusing going on anyway they're, they're just like fixed focus anyway so between that one and that one that's fixed and then obviously the 28 mil lens there can be focused as well and um, but like i say you know just ignore the you know the exposure and stuff here and reason why is obviously because i'm reason why is obviously because i'm just kind of like trying to dig into this quickly to give some examples and what have you and obviously flipping between the different lenses or the different cameras you know that's not going to ideally kind of translate as far as uh, as far as exposure is concerned definitely not for focus because two of them are fixed and one's variable if you want it anyway let me find something else to do okay so i've just changed angle here and also i've just changed also the iso and the white balance a bit the one thing you're gonna have to remember here is i'm completely unfamiliar with the way stuff looks actually on the ipad screen because i'm not monitoring externally to a different screen at the moment which i would be familiar with such as my ninja i'm not going to show you the ninja and that's only because you've already seen that you can take a hdmi live feed out so definitely you can throw this into a ninja for monitoring purposes at least anyways what i'm doing here right now is i've got some objects on the table in front of me and i'm in auto focus but i'm on hopefully touch the focus here so right now what we should see is the live a bit in the in the foreground there on the cup should be in focus now what i'm going to do i'm just going to touch uh, the screen onto that xbox controller at the back so i've just touched the screen there you go okay that is awesome right um, i mean i know there might not be much enough of a difference between them there but it's definitely doing it so let me go back to the cup on the live bird okay so that's just definitely pulled onto there now i'm just going to go back again to the colored buttons on uh, the controller at the back definitely you can definitely see that i mean you can see a little bit of breathing going on there as well um let me see i'll do that box that's on the right hand side of the screen there that hdmi capture box there by a cases by the way another plug for the cases <laughs> okay and then back to the live a bit okay and then back to the controller actually give me one second okay so i've just reshuffled some stuff into this particular frame in here so the battery on the left hand side is what i've got focus on right now now the only problem is because i'm obviously viewing back on like the tiny ipad kind of preview because it obviously is not filling the ipad screen i can't see completely what the focus is like here unfortunately however that is the subject for focus there on the left the battery now also right on like the very edge of the frame there i don't know if that might drop off a bit more because we are onto the edge of the glass as well for the lens but nonetheless anyways the cup in the background i'm just going to touch to focus on that wow okay that's pretty cool now the other thing is here because i am previewing on such a small screen um i can't see how much hunting or whether it's kind of like you know shuffling a bit once it hits focus you'll be able to see that and so will i like you know obviously later when i'm editing it now let me just go back to the battery again okay well that seems to be all right now let me just go to i'll go to the, the the thing that's in the middle of the frame there which is that hdmi capture box so just touch the focus on that okay now that's snapped a bit at the end there okay now i'm not entirely sure what's going on here it's 
probably likely contrast based anyway so obviously depending upon you know the contrast within whatever it is that you're pointing to focus to it will make a difference now i'll just jump back over to the cup okay now that definitely did move slightly that i could see there you'll see this better because you won't be watching or previewing as small as i am now two last goes then back to the battery okay and then i will go back to the uh, the buttons on the xbox controller in the back as long as i can touch the screen properly okay well overall i've got to say i'm extremely impressed with that now i know you can be hypercritical with these things and go well you know it was kind of hunting a bit or you know there's a bit of breathing and stuff like that i mean you know we're talking about the lens and the camera on an ipad here so, and i just think that this is pretty awesome anyway let me just find another thing to set up on okay so i think this will probably be the last shot here because i think you know proof of concept is probably being proven here now what i've done here i have just took my focus to when it comes around like that plane there is where the focus is now i don't know you know there probably isn't that much depth of field going on here so maybe as the box turns around maybe the stuff on the side like that side there and the opposite side maybe they're not so out of focus once they get closer as in that there now but nonetheless that'll give you another idea of something else uh, so that's obviously again all locked off and definitely locked off focus and stuff as to whether or not um you know my exposure and stuff and my color balances are good i don't think so like i say first go round and i've had to dive into this this is basically me just making bad excuses for being a bad kind of like camera operator and dp type person anywho hopefully this video has been useful to you i will be doing a ton more videos now and i'm also going to be getting the iphone 15 pro max and i will definitely be showing multiple setups with that as well so definitely keep an eye on like my main channel and also my vlogging channel for these things that are about to come up and don't forget as well if there's anything that you've seen in the video as far as the hardware is concerned that you may be interested in there will be links to that stuff in the video description so yes if you've liked the video please do give us a thumbs up a sub to the channel would be absolutely awesome i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now